On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and I'm honored to welcome Shane Martin. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. So I came across you from your website, shaneandsimple.com. So you're a dad Mm -hmm. and plant-based and love to be in the kitchen. So I'd love to learn about what your story is. Like, how did you become a plant-based diet? How did you start the cooking and start the recipes on the blog and everything? Uh, well, I've always loved to eat. So, um, that, that's kind of a given. So, um, I grew up in Mississippi and came from a family of, uh, very blue collar. And so both parents worked and we grew up in a very rural part. So we were close to grandparents and everything. And really you just kind of grow up learning to fend for yourself because, you know, there's, we come from a fairly large Southern family. And so um, both parents working when we're staying at grandparents' house for the summer or whatever, you just kind of learn to cook. And so cooking was something that was always fairly natural. I mean, I was never a gourmet cook or anything like that, but um, was pretty handy in the kitchen. It wasn't foreign. And, but growing up where I did in the, you know, the rural parts of Mississippi, you know, it wasn't the healthiest diet. So we ate a lot of veggies and grew a lot of what we ate, but it was always seasoned with lard or pork or, you know, and I always like to kind of joke and tell people, you know, in the South, pork is a seasoning, you know, it's, and so. (laughs) Did your mom have the jar and the can or the old coffee can with the grease drippings? Oh yeah. 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 I'll I'll tell you my story when we get, you'll be surprised, but yeah, I love that. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, I still remember when we would fry eggs, we wouldn't use butter. We'd just get a can of Crisco and throw it in a skillet (laughs) and the egg is floating in the Crisco, you know, and it's like, so yeah. So, uh, was very active all through. I played sports from the time I, I was little. And so I was always fairly fit, um, never struggled with being overweight or anything like that. Um, and actually got a football scholarship to go to, for college and was still, you know, fairly, I guess, healthy and fit as, you know, when people looked at me. But um, when I left college and moved to Nashville back in the early nineties, I was also a musician. So I was there for 13, 14 years as a full-time musician. And when I wasn't being made to work out, uh, the weight kind of piled on pretty quickly Con- still consuming, a what we call a standard American diet, you know, burgers, fries, that kind of thing. A lot mm-hmm. of takeout and, uh, got married in 99 and um, just continued to really pile on the weight. And um, we had moved around. My wife and I had left Nashville in 2005 because we had moved around a little bit because I ended up going into full-time ministry as a music director. Oh, cool. And I went to the doctor probably in 2006, 2007, because one of the pastors I worked for said, you really need to go have a physical. And I had gotten Mm -hmm. pretty heavy. I was you know, I kind of hovered around in high school and college around 180, 185, and was pretty lean and uh, built, but I got up to about 265, and um, finally had a physical, gave in, this was 2006, 2007, at the time, my cholesterol, uh, I got a letter from the doctor, I was pre-diabetic, Mm-hmm. Um, my cholesterol was close to 400. Oh my. My blood, my blood pressure was through the roof. And he said, I need you to come in. I need to talk to you about this. Mm-hmm. And he was actually a doctor that was focused more. He was an MD, but he really kind of, at the, he focused more on dietary lifestyle and trying to combat those things with, uh, you know, lifestyle and dietary changes. He wasn't vegan or anything, but, um, but I didn't go back because I've always had white coat syndrome. And that's pretty funny because I have uh, my family. I have two doctors and a nurse practitioner. 
<laughs> in my immediate family. And I just, I just, it's, I still, I go to the doctor, my blood pressure is always great, but I go to the doctor, you know, just for a checkup or anything and my blood pressure goes pew through the roof. And so, <laughs> um, but anyway, I never went back mm. and about three and a half, four years later, I'd gotten up to my heaviest at about 280, 281. And my wife and I were, and my kids were living in Alabama and I started to get staph infections a lot. And mm. kind of the turning point was I was playing softball at 281 pounds and um, a ball bounced up and hit me in the shin and it didn't heal. Oh, wow. And um, I had all the symptoms of full-blown diabetes at that point, like the patches and I was constantly thirsty and a lot of constantly, you know, the urge to frequently urinate and just, it just, I, I, wounds wouldn't heal. I mean, it was really, it was really scary. And uh, I was a pretty, a guy that was, had a lot of hypochondria. I mean, um, and kind of the turning point for me, I, w I came out of the doctor's office to get uh, an antibiotic prescription. And um, I was over at Target because my leg hurt so bad I couldn't walk on it. And I, they put me on an antibiotic because they were going to schedule um, a time over at the surgical center because they were actually going to have to, the wound wouldn't heal. So they were going to have to open the wound it, just for, you know, getting wow. a little graphic here. But I couldn't hardly walk on my leg. And so I got into Target and started riding one of those little motorized carts around. Right. And when I went to back up so I could get in line, it started going beep, beep, beep. And I was like, I used to make fun of those people. And that's me now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it really kind of uh, used to, it really hit home. And I thought something has to change and I don't know what to do. And um, so finally, I guess it was the end of, it was, a, it was a Saturday, I think. And I noticed, I saw on Facebook, a buddy of mine, who uh from nashville who was being featured by iron man hmm. and he was talking about his mom had gotten colon cancer and so he had gained a lot of weight being on the road as a musician and said he went vegan and lost like 80 pounds <laughs> and i called a mutual friend and he said man yeah thad went plant-based and for me i was like i'm not going vegan those people eat grass and bark and they're really weird you know, a tofu and salad kind of thing. And he just texted me back. He said, check out Forks Over Knives. Mm. So January, I think it was January 19th of 2013, my wife and I sat down and watched Forks Over Knives that Sunday night. Mm. And the next day I went cold turkey. <laughs> and, um, and it was hard because I, um, I tried dieting before and would do well for a week. And then, but, but what this, but what was different with this is I realized I wasn't depriving myself. I just mm -hmm. had to re relearn how to eat and read labels and things like that. And I think the thing that was super encouraging about forks over knives is I, I was told my wife, which I had no intention of being hundred percent plant-based, but I thought, man, if I eat 80, 90% like that, I can enjoy myself on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I ended up going I just went hardcore for the first three or four weeks and I felt better than I ever had. I lost about 25 pounds in the first three weeks. Wow. Um, and I remember uh, we went out to go eat for one of my daughter's birthdays and we went to an abachi grill and I had a little scoop of rice and a few pieces of strip steak and I got home and got sick. Mm. like threw up and I told my wife I was like okay that's it I'm never going back I just I didn't have to convince my body to accept good things and so that kind of mm. so that was 2013 and I've just went been plant-based ever since and um just and because I love food I was like if I want to eat I'm gonna have to learn to cook mm -hmm. and so um so I was really I'm a huge Rip Esselstyn fan love engine two Colin Campbell, Dr. Esselstyn, Michael Greger. I just, I got, I just read everything I could get my hands on, watched every YouTube video. And when it hit me that I could be plant-based permanently is when I saw Rip Esselstyn, like I realized chocolate, chocolate was plant-based. So I was like, so I, I can totally do this, you know? <laughs> 
So, uh, um, <laughs> so anyway, so that was 2013. And in about three months, I lost 55 pounds. Mm. We had our first physical for life insurance. I wouldn't get a physical for life insurance because I knew I wouldn't pass it really. Mm. And uh, my wife and I decided to do it. So I was about, I went from 281 to 226. Wow. And we did our physical. My cholesterol went from over 400 to 199 in those three months. Mm. My blood pressure went from, I think the last time I'd had it checked, it was 160 over, I want to say one, it was 160 over 100, or it was crazy. It was, Mm. you know, it was scary. It was serious. That went down to, I think, 126 over 79. And this was before I started exercising. This was in three months. There was absolutely no sign of diabetes in my system. Wow. Um, just the sleep apnea was gone. And every, it was just like, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm absolutely sold. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so ever since then, we've been completely plant-based. And at first we tried the, Hey, this is daddy's food and this is everybody else. Mm. And then we just got to the end. What was really interesting is two of my children or three of my children were born with allergies. So they were, our son, who is my second born, um, was allergic to dairy and had eczema when he was a baby and into Mm. his toddler. And we realized it was dairy and everything that dairy is in. So we Mm. removed it, went away. So he grew up, so he grew up on soy milk. And then our third born, same thing. She was on soy milk. And then our fifth, um, we noticed she had blood in her stool when she was a newborn. And we realized she was getting it from my wife when she nursed. So at this time, and this was before we went plant-based. Um, so my wife basically went plant-based. We didn't know that was a name for it. You know, she cut out all the meat and dairy and everything. And then the her little tummy troubles cleared up. And so... Mm she's really been a vegan baby. I mean, she's almost nine now, but she's, that's pretty much all she's known. So, Mm -hmm. so long story. So back to kind of back where we just said, no, we're going to all do this. This is something we all need to be doing. And so, um, so that was 2013 and we've been there since, so for, I guess, was that eight, uh, eight years now? That's yeah. great. <laughs> so I love it. And so how did, so do you do all the cooking for everybody? I would say I do in the house, I do about 85% of the cooking. Wow. I do okay. about 85%. Um, so how did you bring the kids on board? And so how old were your, how old are your kids now? <laughs> so my oldest is 19. She'll be 20 this summer, but she's a sophomore uh, in college. My son will be 18 this month. He's a senior in high school. My next, my third, Macy is, uh, she is, well, five kids, I lose their age. Macy's 15, Macy's 15, uh, Mackenzie is, Macy will be 15 in August, Mackenzie is just turned 13, and Millie Jane is eight, so. Luckily, mine were every other year for three years, so it's just like, <laughs> yeah. So depending on which month I am in the year, I can kind of go backwards. Um, yeah, and my oldest is going to be 27 in a few weeks, so I totally, it's, oh, wow. it's such an interesting thing um, with the kids, because we've been plant based for nine years, so they were 13, 15, and 18 when we switched over, and my husband oh, wow. ended up okay. losing 70 pounds very quickly. Um, but yeah, and all my kids are plant-based now. My daughter's graduating medical school in May. The boys, one finished college already, one's about to finish. So yeah, it's been a really fun, my middle one, Gabe or Jonathan, I can't get the name straight. Um, he can do 600 pull-ups in an hour. This is a plant-based kid. So I'm like, it's so fun to see people like, you know, your protein. And I'm like, um, yeah, <laughs> so let me tell yes. you what's going on over here. <laughs> yes, exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. So, so how we, do the kids take it? Is there in a Southern, or where are you located now? So we're in North Carolina now. Oh, okay. so we live outside, we still live right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, but my wife was from Tennessee and I was from Mississippi, but okay. all, all through their younger and toddler years, we've lived in the Southeast. So gotcha. yeah, they, yeah. so, 
Um, it was, you know, my two oldest, it was a little different. Um, it was a little tough uh, because they were used to going to Chick-fil-A and McDonald's. and Oh, Chick-fil-A's crack. <laughs> oh, I, don't know, I don't know what they do with that Chick-fil-A. I don't know what they do. <laughs> and you, you top it off with never waiting in line for more than a minute and a half through the drive through And it's like, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. We need Chick-fil-A um, tofu. I know. We hey, do. can you work on that recipe, please? Let me know. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I, well, you know what? It's funny. I feel like we've got the plant-based version of their their poly sauce down. We feel like mm. we've got that. But yeah, so it was a little. Um, it was it was definitely harder for them. Uh, the two younger ones, you know, they they were like, you know, they were like five and seven so they'll eat whatever you basically put in front of them you know mm. and and they were and my wife was always she had always been fascinated with food anyway and how it worked in the body and was always I would say healthy and watched what she ate and she but she would bounce it with like well if I have this I've got to have this starch and I got to have this green mm. and you know so she grew up eating lots of salads and vegetables and things like that that I would say for her meat was more of a side portion of her mm. diet growing up it was never the main where for me um, it was a big steak and a little bitty potato you know mm. you know what I'm saying like <laughs> so she and she always fed the kids that way so fortunately our kids never struggled with uh, obesity or anything like that they would have if I had been the sole cook early on but <laughs> um but uh. um so and Millie Jane, like I said, was basically born into it. And mm. so she really had known nothing but but eating that way, you know. Wow. So for like baby food, like doctors were like, Well, how is she getting her fat and everything? Well, was she nursed? Mm -hmm. So best source of nutrient for a newborn and a bay or a toddler as long as they can do that. But we would just she loved avocado, so we just slice an avocado open and let her just eat it right out of the out of the skin. Mm. So, you know, we do you know, so she loved, she would do that, but, um, so I, I mean, but we, we did have to sit down and talk with the other kids. So we, through some trial and error, we learned how to kind of transition. Mm. Um, but we did things like talk to the kids, like, Hey, daddy wants to be around. Cause the kid, you could tell the kids attitude changed because they knew I wasn't healthy. They right. just, I couldn't play with them. I was lazing around. And when they saw the change, it was like, we're doing this because we daddy cares about his heart, cares about y'all. And I want you to be able to grow up big and strong. And, mm. and we really found like just in little things like replacing the fried snacks and the chips and stuff, you know, learning how to bake tortillas to make healthy chips or, mm -hmm. you know, always, they always love fruit. Fruit was always a big thing. So we didn't have to remove any of that. Um, we would do things like, ants on a log where you put peanut butter on celery and put some chocolate chips on it or raisins you know they would do things like that we would mm -hmm. we would so there were always ways to incorporate extra treats we just make sure we kept that stuff in the house and um we take them grocery shopping teach them how to read labels and so we we would say hey we want you to go pick these two things out you go and you go pick these two things out like really utilizing them and kids are very resilient especially if they feel like they're being included and so mm -hmm. um so we would do that a lot of times we would give them five dollars when we were going on a trip and say now go pick out something pick out your snack that's healthy and let's see what you get and if they came back with something we were like yeah you couldn't you know <laughs> you know we would use it as a teaching time you know things like that sure. but sure um so that's kind of how we introduced them but i would also say too we were not militant mm. with it. We would say, this is how we, we were very like when we're in the house, this is how you eat. There's no question. Mm -hmm. But we also realized they were getting invited to birthday parties. And it's like, how do we do that? You know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, and so some would agree with us. Some would not. We just told them you'd be respectful. A lot of times they would take their own food. Um, but we also realized if they, fell off the wagon we weren't berating them we weren't chastising them mm -hmm. but but almost bar none every single time they would come home from a friend's house and if they ate something outside of what they'd been eating in our home they always came home sick you know yep. and I'm oh, like that's the yeah. best lesson you could learn right there oh my goodness so we did the same thing well Emily went off to college when we switched over 
that summer well we, she was here but um it was funny the boys the 13 15 we did the same thing at home you guys were doing plant-based outside do whatever you want and over the course of a year you see they stopped ordering chicken and they started ordering the tofu and <laughs> but my youngest gabe he uh, was on this varsity baseball team as a freshman and also cross country and running all these sports and you know he's the coaches understood i was like it was a small town in western colorado i'm the doctor in town it's pretty well who you belong yeah i'm pretty vocal about the plant-based diet in this little mm -hmm. town of ranchers and you know people who work in the gas and oil industry and right amazing people but um but yeah what happened was uh gabe went off to a trip and um for state for um, cross country he didn't make state but he was invited because he was his coach took two of the kids along and they decided to just have at it pizza ice cream hamburgers and uh gabe came home uh that night and he goes mom i'm just really tired i'm just gonna go to sleep and you know i'm thinking well he was you know up with his friends that's fine he calls me from his room in the middle of the night going mom my stomach's really killing me i was like <laughs> what so i run upstairs and i'm looking on him i was like you know, it's like moving from the middle of the stomach down to the right lower side where your appendix is like, what did you eat? And he totally fessed up. I was like, I'm going to kill your coach later. But right now <laughs> we got to get you to the ER because I'm thinking, do you have appendicitis? And sure enough, um, Gabe, uh, he, we did an ultrasound, his appendix looked fine, but they actually admitted him because his pain got worse. His white cell count, which fights infections, went from mm -hmm. normal to high. He was in severe pain and it took like 24 hours for him to mm. finally subside. And that kid has been good pretty much ever since. I mean, you have his moments, but the dairy sure. thing is, but I, but yeah, I totally get when they get sick, mine got admitted. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we never got admitted, but I remember <laughs> one year, my, my, we, we were in North Carolina now, but between our stint in Alabama and uh, North Carolina we were in Mississippi for about 10 months and my brother lived about three hours north of us in Mississippi we were down in mid middle Mississippi and and my my uh or we were no we were still living in Alabama but anyway my son Jonathan was probably in the eighth seventh eighth grade I guess six six seventh grade but he went and stayed with my brother for a week and he just ate Cap'n Crunch and Taco <laughs> Bell and you know a little oh Debbie cakes and he got like sick, like the third or fourth night he was there. And my, my brother is a nurse practitioner <laughs> and, and he just was like throwing up and my brother goes, what's wrong with you? And he goes, I'm ready to go home and get vegan again. He goes, <laughs> I was like, and so, so it's, it's kind of like what you said oh, with your son, they, oh they gosh. have their moments, but right. it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It is, it is good <laughs> to watch. Like they always they always come back to the plan. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, they, that, <laughs> this, it, yes, it is a fun memory to walk down. <laughs> it's like, he's still, yeah. he's, um, he's 22 now, but it's just, it's so entertaining. It's like <laughs> Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. But I love to tell that story to people because it really just, you know, I was like, and I've had patients who had kids to do the same thing and then they go to birthday parties and eat and they're like, they don't feel good afterwards. I'm like, well, they're what's their body telling? They're rejecting. I love what you said too. Like I didn't have to get, convince my body to accept good foods. This is amazing. That's a great statement. Oh yeah, that, I think that was the, that was what was really telling for me. Like I actually got worried because I still remember it when we left the restaurant because I'm an all or nothing person. I don't reside in the middle. I don't do moderation well. That's why I went cold turkey. I was like, I'll never wean myself off. Because once I give myself permission, I'm gone. Yeah. And so, so I just remember, you know, I'd had this three or four weeks of just feeling great. And when we went out, I was really, so I was really heightened and almost scared. And then, you know, I had some rice and I had two or three pieces of the sweet and sour chicken and then mm. had that. And I had the veggies with a little bit of strip steak. And I remember leaving and like normally when I go to the one of the, would go to the one of those places, I just would crush it and just like as much as I could pack in and and I remember driving home and I wasn't full and I didn't feel yucky but I felt uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I, I told my wife I was like I just it's not that I don't feel good but I just something feels awkward and I actually got mm -hmm. kind of concerned like mm -hmm. I was afraid it was might be food poisoning mm -hmm. and 
but I remember we just pulled up in the driveway and I didn't even make it to the house. I just was out in the yard yakking. And wow. I, that's when I told my wife and I called, I have another, I have a cousin who's a doctor and I called him and I was like, and he goes, well, have you eaten any meat in the last month? And I was like, no. And he goes, your body's just telling you quit it. And I was like, <laughs> point, point take. And then that's, that's when I said, okay, it's a hundred percent because it yeah. was like, that's what I noticed, you know? And I didn't, and even with the, with the, um, like I used to love to go eat candy bars and drink Cokes. I'd drink a ton of Coke. And mm. a lot of people ask me, well, did you get sugar headaches? And I really, I never did because I was like, and I'm not saying, and you being a doctor, you might, I don't know what you would tell patients that are fighting diabetes, but I mean, I was like, if I got a sweet tooth, I literally just went in and I'd eat two or three apples and a couple of bananas, mm -hmm. but I never had a crash. I never, so that's how I fought my sugar craving, you mm. know? And, and so um, now oh, granted yeah. that weaned down to where it was like, when I was like, okay, I got this thing under control here, but, but it was interesting. Like I noticed that if I'd eat a couple of bananas or whatever, mm -hmm. I wouldn't crash an hour later, like I would after I drank a Coke or mm -hmm. eat a candy bar. And, yeah. and so I was like, okay, I just feed my body the right things and it knows what to do with it. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like, and, and that's I always tell people that my body never rejected the good stuff. Never. It's amazing. It's like, you yeah. just got to get out of the way of your body getting well. That's really all it is. Yeah, yeah it really, it really, it really is. You know? <laughs> get, and dairy, I can't even, cool. dairy, dairy literally makes me nauseous. Like it just, and I tell people if they say, well, what's one thing I could get up? I tell them dairy, get it Absolutely. out of your diet. Get it Absolutely. out of your diet. If yeah. I had to choose between meat or dairy, it's dairy straight up yes, every time because absolutely. by far the most serious, I think, illnesses and consequences is the dairy. It's, it's so not good for us, but um, what cracks me up too is their, their commercials like, oh, look, it does a body good. It's like, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it actually doesn't. I really know actually, it doesn't. <laughs> Makes you sick. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason that we have a high percentage of osteoporosis. Mm. here in Norway we're the mm. largest consumers of milk there's a reason for that mm -hmm. well and allergies and eczema like you described yes. with your child very very common and you know drinking large amounts of milk can cause anemia in, in little ones and we've known that forever like when you see a little one for their checkup and they're checking your baby to make sure they're not anemic when they're you mm -hmm. know, like 18 two years 18 months two years old uh, if they're anemic, they're like, you cut back on the milk. So I'm like, why would I feed a child a liquid that's going to be causing anemia when there's other things that they should be consuming to, re I, it is the, I the lack of common sense. But again, this, this is how we're trained in medical school. I, anyway, I can talk about that. That's a whole other, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but so I love that your story. I love it's a story of healing and, but now you're sharing your mm -hmm. talent. Okay. Because honestly, there's been several of your recipes over the years that I've found and just they're like staples. The honey mustard dressing <laughs> is like, there's some in my refrigerator. I buy oh. big things of brown mustard because of you. And then it's literally, I love honey mustard dressing. So I just love it. So thank you, thank you. Making it simple, garlic powder, maple syrup and brown mustard, you're good to go. Uh -huh. And I'm um, telling you. And <laughs> it's just been great but you know and what's fun is i'll share some of your videos and some of your other stuff with patients and people that i know and they all love it so tell us how yeah. was shane and simple born first of all what does the name mean and okay how did it get started okay so uh when we were living in uh before we moved back to charlotte in 2013 2014 was when we moved to uh mississippi um, I had taken a job at a church there and, um, it was the town I actually graduated high school in. And, um, and so around February of 2015, we'd been there for a few months around uh, February, 2015, the Whole Foods in Jackson, Mississippi was doing an engine to plant-based immersion month kind of wow. it's when they were sponsoring that and whole foods at the time uh, i can't remember the name of it but it was like an eating specialist or 
nutrition specialist or just it was it wasn't anybody that had a degree in it but it was like or maybe they did but they just healthy eating specialists or something and they were um I, I saw it on the website and I really and I tell people it's weird because it's like after choosing to eat this way you become really passionate about it you mm-hmm. know because you become more aware it doesn't just affect what you eat you you're very aware you become a lot more sensitive to what's around you, what, how your food's made, what goes into your food, and you see the effects that it has, and it, you, you really become passionate about it, yeah. and so I just always love talking to people about it, but I saw, and I, like I said, I'm a big Engine 2 fan, and I thought, well, I'm just going to go down and sit in on the meetings, and, you know, if anybody needs help, or, you know, maybe just meet people, and so I went down and the first night was just listening to him talk and I was sitting in the back and there were a lot of people there that were just trying to learn about it. And so the first night as they're introducing everything and they said, is, is anybody familiar with this? And I just raised my hand and I was really the only one that raised my hand. And they said, so do you eat this way? And I said, yeah, I've been doing it for about, I guess at the time, two years now and they said really they said well how did it affect you I said lost about 100 pounds and then everybody just kind of looked and um so anyway just developed some relationships and then they asked me to kind of be the keynote speaker at the end and just and so it was great and I loved just talking to people about it and just really seeing the impact that it had on their lives so I told everybody I said I talked to my wife and I said well why don't we just when this is over, if people want to kind of continue to maybe offer support, why don't we just open up our home and say, every other Sunday, we're going to have a potluck Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll provide the food or whatever. And, and I think it was then that I really started wanting to do something with food as an occupation. And I didn't know what that was like and, or what that would be like. And my wife kept telling me, you ought to just start a blog. There's a lot of these bloggers I follow. They make money. I'm like, I have no clue how people make money on a blog and had no clue what you know how to do a blog I mean and so we started inviting people into our home and we just it grew Mm. and so like literally every other month it was like every other week it was great they were telling their friends and it was you know it was and we still have have relationships with people we met doing that and stay in touch with it's been great and um so we ended up moving uh we left Mississippi that same year to move to Charlotte and I just became very restless and was really coming up on close to I was over I'd been in ministry for over a decade and going on 15 years and really was just almost burnt out to be honest with you and and I was I was like man I would love to do something with food or be a tv personality which is what I would really love to do and and but I'm also a perfectionist as an artist. And so it's like, Oh, I, it's gotta be awesome right out of the gate or I can't do it. And so I kind of let that hinder me for a while. But so my wife said, why don't you just start a blog and start sharing your recipes? And really it was that the reason that that kind of came about is because people kept calling me going, Hey, I would love to do what you do. It's working, but I just don't know where to start. Mm. And then it hit me. I resonate with that. Like, yeah, like I remember the first week or two eating, I didn't eat a ton because I didn't know what to eat. Like I never <laughs> thought about beans and corn and whole grain bread. And because everything you're told right now is don't eat white potatoes. You can't eat bread. The carbs mm-hmm. are bad. And so you're like, what, what do I eat? And then you realize that most of that is just crap and not based on science. And so, mm-hmm. um, so I started taking what I had learned over the years, cooking through learning through uh engine two and forks over knives and I basically was like I want to take the recipes I used to enjoy and figure out how to just make them healthy Mm -hmm. and so that's really how what I do kind of came about it's like man I loved burgers so I'm gonna make veggie burgers or I loved you know when I found out you could make cheese out of cashews then I was like that was a whole nother level of heaven to me you know it was like and so um so anyway, my wife said, why don't you just start a blog? And I thought, yeah, I've got to, I've got to really do something. And so we had settled back in Charlotte and originally, um, 
I had come up with the name famine to feast because it was like going from starving to now I'm just gorging myself to health. And, and then a buddy of mine said, yeah, I don't really like that name. He said, it sounds too much like a youth group, cheesy youth group or something. And I was like, and I was like, uh, he said, it's just like, we're going to go conquer the world. And we're all, we're, you know, he said, it sounds like you're vegan and mad about it. And I was like, well, I don't want to be that. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, scrap that. And then uh, um, I could, had come up and registered the name plant-based menu. And a buddy of mine called me who is a vegan. He lives in Colorado. He and his wife live in Colorado. And he said, he said, man, he goes, you know, we're your biggest supporters. But he said, um, he, he faced, he messaged me through Facebook one night and we were kind of video chatting. And he said, he said, do what you want. But he said, I think you and your story is what's really going to draw people in. And he mm -hmm. said, he said, you just make things because he said, everything you do was based off those conversations with your family and friends of saying, Hey, I do what you do. I just don't know how to do it. And he said, you just have a way of making things easy and understandable. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought, well, if I'm going to use me, it's Shane. So I got to figure <laughs> out, maybe I can figure out something with Shane in the title. And then I just heard something in the background go plain and simple. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, that's it. So the whole Shane and simple was it's just, I'm a simple person. I don't like complicated. I never have. I'm a, I'm a simpleton. I, you know, it's like, if, we're, if you're telling me a story, just get to the point, I, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and so the whole idea of the recipe is just being easy. And, you know, I like to say they're, they're, Everybody has this idea that vegan and eating plant-based is this for this well-heeled elite and it's pretentious. And so my tagline, you know, is practical, not pretentious plant-based recipes. And so that's the whole thing. It's just everything I try to make is easy and is, I try to make it so I can do it. Mm. And so if I can do it, that's the goal. Like that's the bar. If I can do it, I feel like everybody else can do it. So, mm. so that's kind of how that was born. So that's, it, I guess it became official um, I guess I registered that name, but I never did the first blog post for probably a year. I just, mm. I didn't know where to start. And then finally in 2017, my wife said, please just do a, do a post. <laughs> and we kind of felt like it was then or never. So in 2017, I made a grilled peanut butter, jelly and banana sandwich. And I thought, oh, this would be a great plant-based kids meal. And I had never been into photography, didn't know anything about it. I took pictures with my iPhone. Mm -hmm. They were terrible. And I just wrote the post. And finally, my wife is a graphic designer. So she edited the photos for me. And, and I just put it out there. And that was August of 2017. And so that's, that's kind of where it started. So that's fantastic. So how has it grown? So tell me, how do you, what to share everything about your blog because there's quite a few yeah. different things on there yeah so the main thing is, are the recipes obviously it's I would say it's definitely a recipe site I'm trying to move not move but do more of lifestyle articles and things like that but um with the growth the recipes are what is kind of what people come for and trying mm -hmm. to stay on with the whole search engine optimization and google and all of that <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was really interesting. Um, when I started, the goal was to do, everybody told me just be consistent with your content, you know, whether it's once a month, once a week, you know, you don't have to go conquer the world in a week, but you know, just be consistent. So the goal was once, once a month. And then I was like, well, I think I could do one recipe a week. So I started that. And basically I just started I just started share. I joined every Facebook group I could join and just shared the recipe and, uh, you know, just whatever I could do. Mm. And, um, and so I guess back in 20, 28. So I did it for about a, a year and a half and things had grown. I mean, um, I had grown enough in about a year and a half. I got on my first ad network. And I think mm. that was, that was with Mediavine. Um, I still remember I'm with ad thrive now, but when I was with Mediavine, I remember going and looking at their, um, 
I remember looking at their requirements to, to, for an ad to be for them to take you on as one of their clients as a publisher. And I was like, there's no way I'll ever get that many page views. There's just no way. Mm. And, um, I had a really good Thanksgiving one year and, um, had enough page views to get on. So I did that. And the first year I did the blog from 2017, August, 2017 to 2018, it took me a whole year to make a hundred dollars. <laughs> um, cause I was running Google ads. Like if you have a Google account, you can just go and sign up and Google. If you have a blog, they'll automatically place the ads. And the only reason mm -hmm. I did that is I wanted the website to look legit, like, Oh, mm -hmm. he's running ads. So he must be a big deal, you know? <laughs> and, um, but I mean, they paid like, I remember one day I made 27 cents and I went, wow, this is awesome, but <laughs> depressing. Like I, I just, but uh... that, but that being said, um, I just remember some of the podcasts saying, you know, just do something every day. Mm. And while, while I was working at the church, I still remember getting up and I would, um, over the course of that first year, I was getting up at about five in the morning. I'd grab my laptop and I would go about a mile and a half up the road to this little coffee shop and I'd be the mm. only one in there. And I just worked like it was my full-time job and it was a moment. I loved it. It was kind of an escape, you know, and just, and I just treated it like it was my full-time job and until I had to get back into the reality. And, um, and then when I got on and then later on, like I said, I finally got enough page views to go with Mediavine in that November of 2018, I think. And then um, I did go through a moment from the end of 2018 up and through the spring of 2018, of 2019, where I was, I didn't get depressed. I guess I, guess I got kind of discouraged because I'm like, I'm just never going to grow the blog big enough. I don't know what to do. And I went to a conference in Charlotte that summer of 2019. And um, they gave me some really good advice. I was with other people that I was with the ad network that I was on. They were holding the conference, the Mediavine conference for Charlotte bloggers and just took a lot of things they did. And I kind of came, made, met some new people and kind of came out with this renewed energy and met with some of the bloggers that lived in Charlotte that were, that have food blogs that are doing really well. And they mm. gave me some advice and I got back on. And two, I think it was a turning point because the church had gotten so busy that I had forsaken the blog and there was like one month I only did one recipe. Mm. And then that's when I went, I'm either going to do this or I'm not. And so mm. that summer it was me like, I'm doing this. So I got done with that conference, got super excited, started getting a game plan, learning about SEO, um, learning how to, you know, getting more consistent with my content. And so every Monday night I would, cook and photograph and write a post after everybody got settled <sighs> and I would do that on Monday and Thursday nights and so I usually were up was up until about 2 30 in the morning oh my on goodness. those nights but I was getting two recipes out a week and then towards the end of 2019 my wife and I started talking and my salary my what I was making on the blog I switched ad networks and I'd moved over with Ad Thrive, which give them a shout out. Ad Thrive's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, we started talking. My what I was making with the blog was not where my full time salary was, but we were. Andrea was talking about taking on a little more freelance work, and she said, "I think it's time. We're either going to keep this. This is either going to be a hobby, or it's, we're going to really try to make a career out of it." Mm. And we went to that little coffee shop and sat down, looked at our budget. What do we need to do? And it's like any business. You've got to be willing to work for a part-time salary. You've got to be willing to work full-time for a part-time pay to get it to where you want it to go. And mm -hmm. made the decision that this is what we were going to do. So in October of 2019, um, I informed the church I would be resigning after the first of the year. And we were just going to do it full time. And then February 1st of 2020, I went full time with the blog mm. and then COVID hit a mm -hmm. month later. So yes. Um, did that affect you at all with the blog? I, yes, it did. Um, 
it uh, so we get paid on what's called an RPM. It's revenue per thousand clicks, mm-hmm. and so um, and it's the first quarter of any year is with any advertising budgets are low anyway. But um, normally, say your average might be anywhere from fifteen to twenty five dollars per thousand views, which is really good in the first quarter. We saw it drop to four, five, and six dollars. Wow. So it was, so I had a little bit of a cushion because I had just switched with ad thrive and we get paid, um, in what's called a net 45. So we get paid 45 days after that month closes. Mm, I gotcha. And I had, and I just switched from media vine, which paid on a net 65. So January and February were actually okay months because I had back pay coming in. Mm. I didn't really feel the effects until April, May, and a little bit of June. But once COVID started to kind of, everybody learned how to adapt and, and everything kind of evened out, it went back up. And so by the summer, by the end of the summer, things were kind of on the way up. The blog had just continually steadily grown. Nice. And, uh, and so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I know I've talked a lot, but it was, I think just making the decision to like, we're going to do this and being scared out of our minds and believing it's what we were supposed to do. Uh um it was and I will tell you running a blog is way more work than I ever because I thought oh I'm just gonna make money and we're just gonna go and we'll go do this (laughs) and I was like oh man I'm like I work harder now than I ever have you know but (laughs) but Uh, but I I I come down the stairs I walk into my little room and I do my stuff for the day and if I don't want to take a shower and stay in my pajamas I do that if I you know I try to not to do that because I like to you know, take on the day, but, but that's kind of where it's been. So, um, we, we kind of laugh because it was like every month we go, we made it again, we made it again. (laughs) And then when it kind of became obvious that this was going to be kind of our thing, you know, towards the third, you know, around September, October of last year, we're like, okay, we think this is like, this is legit what we do now. And so, Mm -hmm. So yeah, so February 1st was one year that I'd been doing it full time. And um, I definitely don't take it for granted. I mean, I, and I love what I do and I, I love the stories that I get from people. I love the comments and I never really understood when people would say, um, when people would say, oh, it affected me. But when you read a comment from Australia or Canada or Colorado Mm -hmm. and you get these emails saying, you know, I keep this, it's kind of hard to imagine having that effect on people. And it's very mm-hmm. humbling. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, my dog's going no, crazy. That's okay. Mine's laying down sleeping. So, <laughs> so it's probably a little more than you wanted to know, but like, no, I think that's, good. I think that's fabulous. Um, well, last year <clears throat> we launched, <clears throat> excuse me, three years ago, actually, um, it's called healthy human revolution. That's the name of the podcast. And we have for me, it was working with patients and seeing the problems that they would encounter. So I can give them what to eat and how to eat. And I certainly up my game in the kitchen, but I'm not a food blogger, but was like, how do they deal with the social situation? How do they shop on a budget? How do they mm-hmm. save time in the kitchen? This is, these were the excuses I hear over and over. And so that's how we started Healthy Your We have courses to do that. We have a blog with some recipes and stuff. But the other thing we launched last year was everywhere I'd go to speak or meet people, they're like, well, how do I find a plant-based doctor? Because there's not one near me, you know, just like mm-hmm. you, right? So you had diabetes and all these other um, chronic diseases. So we launched plant-based telehealth in March of last year, first wow. week of COVID, um, which was a silver lining because telemedicine was, you know, it's on the up for sure, but COVID really took away the perceived obstacles to care in this type of capacity. And I've been doing telemedicine for a couple of years and um, from traditional family practice. And it was quite an experience. So we're we're almost a year old and we continue to grow. We've added doctors. We have four doctors now. We have two more coming out in March. Um, So yeah, and uh, I'm licensed in 49 states in DC. I'm waiting for Massachusetts, but you know, we're trying to bring on other doctors. I don't want to see everyone, but I need to kind of build that bridge because um, our business sure. partner, Anthony, and I launched this last year, but it's, it is a lot of work. All we talk about is the marketing and systems and the EHR and this and that. And so, you know, you're constantly mm-hmm. 
uh, it's hard. And I went part time to my day job and I do this the rest of the time and I get it. <laughs> yeah. I so get it. <laughs> um, it's exhausting. There's there are days you're just like, what have I done? <laughs> y- yes. Yeah. Why can't so, it just be fun all the time? Right. You know? Why can't I just talk to the patients and everyone just be happy? And you know. um, yeah. no, I, I, I totally get, but they're, you know, it's just so important, right? You got to get in front of people. You got to let them know you're there. You're constantly just looking to tweak and grow and collaborate. Yeah. And, it's a uh, really true, very, very true. And it's never ending. It's never no. ending. The refinement no. process, and that's what I'm learning. The refinement, like I just updated the homepage of the website, like because that's what Google and SEO was saying we needed to do, you know. And it's yeah. like, oh, it's like you get one thing done, and there's another thing to do. But I mean, yeah, it's like I tell people, a bad day blogging for me is better than a great day at any other job. So. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. There's exactly. So yeah, we just switched over our electronic health records. So we moved all these patients over to this and it's so much better. It's, it's just a better experience for them. It's better for us, but oh my heavens, <laughs> it's a lot of work. So, um, but yeah, I agree. It's the worst day in lifestyle medicine, family lifestyle medicine is doing this is so much better because all my patients are plant-based or want to be plant-based. So mm-hmm. they're coming to me, wanting me to tell them to eat plants. I'm like, ha, sure. Okay, <laughs> no <problem. yes. laughs> yeah. That's like me. Oh, I got to get up and go cook again and make yes. something, you know, it's like, yes. so the yeah. worst part about it is, is like usually my wife and the kids are hovering and they're going, do we get to eat this? You got to photograph. I'm like, no, I got to photograph this. <laughs> So oh my goodness that's so fun what a well that's a good problem they like your food yeah, it's a good problem <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm fortunate so. yeah that is an excellent problem wow that is really cool well i know i've kept you almost an hour bless your heart so wh- i'm good what- <laughs> i want to ask two questions what is your favorite recipe that you like to share and what are some tips that you like to share with people and how should they connect with you i guess that's three questions um, on eating wow. a plant-based diet. Mm, okay. Uh, favorite recipe, man, that's a good question. Um, I would say, um, okay. Tell me the second question. Let me answer that one first and then I'll come mm. back and answer that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Well, I guess, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, what would be your tips to help people transition to a plant-based diet? Yes. And then how can they connect with you? Yeah. So just some things that I've learned, I would say, um, I would say one, take, I think it's, I think it's a few things. And I would say first, uh, just make your mind up and do it. Just, mm. just do it. Um, Cause I'm, I can, I, I am by nature a creative and an artist, so I can just visualize and brainstorm all day long. But the problem with dreamers like me is we're very seldom doers. And, mm. and so it, I understand the, you just get to that monumental moment of having to jump off the cliff and just, you just have to do it. <laughs> so I would say, just make your mind up and do it. Um, and then once you do that, um, don't try to conquer the world in a day. Like, don't think about tomorrow or the next week. Think about what you're going to eat that day. Mm. Like, make it, don't make it complicated. So make it easy on yourself. Don't put undue pressure. Like, it's good to plan and it's good, it's good to have a game plan, but we're not meal planners. We're not meal preppers. You know, I'm going to go in and pull things, but, but our pantries are stocked the right way now. But, but all that to say is just wake up and eat a bowl of oatmeal with fruit one day and then decide you're going to have a, a salad for, or whatever it is, but just conquer one day at a time, do that. Mm-hmm. And when you do fall off the wagon, forget it's not the end of the world. Like, and I think, <laughs> I think that's why I love what Dr. Greger says, because I really feel like there are a lot of people that adhere to this lifestyle that are looking for perfection, Mm -hmm. even a lot of the stalwarts. And it's like, and that's why I love when Dr. Greger says, this is about progress over perfection. Mm -hmm. And the body is so resilient that I guarantee you, you feed it the right way in enough quantity, 
it'll cancel out the bad crap. I mean, that's how, and that's why I love Dr. Greger. You know, it's like the goal is to be a hundred percent plant-based. And I think, and yeah. I will, I will wave that flag all day long. For me, it, there's no question. I think the science has spoken. It's there. But for people getting started when they do have a bad day and fall off the wagon and they eat that cheeseburger, they're, you know, I mean, just forgive yourself mm. and just don't do it later that night and, or just do a little better the next day. So I would say one, you know, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Just make the decision to do it, but, but don't, don't punish yourself. Just do a little bit better the next day and pick yourself mm. up and move on. I would also say to find community community mm. is incredibly valuable. So whether it's a Facebook group, whether it's friends in your neighbor, and look, we found community in Alabama and Mississippi, <laughs> the most unlikely places. So it I can agree. be done. It can be done. Yes. But, but when you have people around you and like the potlucks were awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we were just sharing a meal and you have people, some people that are further along down the road on their journey. And some people just, just starting to get on the road on their journey. And but community is very valuable. And whether it's online or whether it's in your neighborhood or whatever, I would say having that support group around you is, is invaluable. Mm. Um, I think, um, I think the other thing that I would say is um, when, once you decide to do it and I tell people just to remove the obstacles, just clean house, just, get your pantry cleaned out, clean your refrigerator out. And people say, well, I don't, it's like wasting money. And I'm like, better to throw it in the dumpster than your gut. And so, <laughs> you know, give the boxed foods away, all the, you can, you know, go donate that, but anything in the fridge that you don't need, just, just do it. Just, mm -hmm. just, you kind of just have to make that decision. And so I think those are the, the, the biggest things, but I, you know, so just deciding to do it, forgiving yourself, progress over perfection, finding community and just cleaning house, just mm. thing. This is, this is how we're going to do it now. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Those are excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. So I always tell people when they fall off the wagon, I was like, remember, this is a journey and all this is, is data. This is just data. That's it, yes. <laughs> it's like, we're just going to use this information to figure out how to plan to avoid the potential fall off the next time. So there's no right or wrong. Again, your journey's like this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, and uh, yeah, there is no right or wrong way to do that, but I think you're exactly right. Home has to be your safe space. So you have yes. to get out, <laughs> out um, if you can. Sometimes there's family members who are not on board and that's a whole nother discussion. That's a but, whole nother discussion. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness, yes. Yeah. So how can people, Connect with you, and what is your favorite recipe? Okay, so connecting, um, shaneandsimple.com is uh, the website. So that's where all the recipes, everything is free. Um, it's not a subscription base. Um, I love you can subscribe, and really all that does is you get my newsletter when a new recipe comes out, or it's a way to connect. And that's close. That's that's what's been awesome. That community has grown to almost 20,000 people just that's awesome. through a website subscribing, which is great. So um, that's the easiest place to find everything. So shaneandsimple.com, every recipe on there is free. Um, I do have a two or three eBooks. One is like a seven day, it's a kickstart. So it's like a, it's a five day plant-based kickstart where it has all the recipes laid out. Um, it's a menu that's already done for you. And so you can download that and it's all digital and there's like a printed version and there's a color version for your tablets. So they get that. And there's also the newest thing um, is a little $5 meal planner that you can mm. just, you, you pay once and you can download forever. And it's like a grocery shopping list menu uh, to just kind of help you stay on track. And, um, but that's the only thing you pay for. Like the website's completely free. There is no, right now, there is no, uh, monthly subscription. So all the recipes are free. Mm. Um, so shaneandsimple.com there. You can email me at shane at shaneandsimple.com. Um, sometimes it takes me a little, the, the, the pro is that a lot of people reach out to me now. The con is that a lot of people reach out to me now. So <laughs> I don't have an assistant. So when you get an email from me, it's not somebody typing in my, my, 
my mm -hmm. language. It's me. So sometimes it takes two or three days to get back to people, but I do get back to people. So Shane at shaneandsimple.com. Um, and then the Facebook group, uh, the Facebook page is facebook.com slash Shane and Simple Cooking. But there's also a Shane and Simple community. It's a group. And so basically I kind of let that run itself and it, you can go and join that. And um, what that is, is just people sharing the recipes they're making and talking to one another. And so I really wanted to create, my hope was that it would just be a place where it's, I call it pragmatic extravagance. There's an intention behind it, but I don't get in there. And the only time I get, get involved is when somebody starts, you know. Yeah, yeah. Posting acting, things. You know, a certain, they don't need to be posting or whatever. And I yeah, have no yeah. problem using a delete button or a block button or a ban <laughs> yeah, button. Right. But it's a great place for people to come and just share. And what's been really great is even people that have shared recipes that weren't compliant, mm. nobody's ripping them. They're saying, hey, you may want to think about this and go reread. So there, it's really a great community if you're looking for community. So nice. it's, it's um, but it's in the group section. So if you go to Shane and Simple at facebook.com, Shane and Simple Cooking, the page, you can connect to the group through that page. And we'll put a, um, we'll put a link for all of your, your okay. website and your Facebook pages in yeah. your group for sure. Um, and, that's uh, fantastic. So those are the easiest ways. I'm on Instagram, still growing that and Pinterest, but I, I have more, um, I'm way more involved with the, the Facebook side of things gotcha. and through the website. So, gotcha. so that'd be the best ways to connect. Now, favorite recipes. Um, so let's, let's break it down by meal if we shall. Like, so I love breakfast food. I love breakfast <laughs> food and I love savory breakfast food. Um, but if I were to say my favorite breakfast recipe is on the website. It is my vegan cheesy grit barbecue soy curl sauteed kale breakfast bowl. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, I found that there was a little vegan restaurant up the road from us called Bean. And it's not healthy. It's not a healthy restaurant. It would be where we would go when friends and family would come into town. Mm. And I just say that's a less unhealthy option is what I say. I just got an email notification from you from your chickpea soup. Oh, did you? Oh, newest I recipe. Just got out right now. There you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Vegan chick, the chickpea noodle soup. Yes, from I just like, hey, over. look. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh. they had a version of this and I went home and I was like, I have to make it healthy. I got to get the oil out of it. I got to do it. So oh. basically I water saute the kale and it turns out great. And I took soy curls and I just used a little barbecue sauce and uh, I make, I've got a recipe for vegan cheesy grits that, you know, uses nutritional yeast. There's no, and so I just made a bowl out of it. So that's my favorite breakfast bowl. You get your <laughs> greens, you get your everything. So And your grits. You're from the South, my friend. You got to have the grits. We got <laughs> to have grits. Oh, have to have grits. I grew up on grits. I get it. <laughs> oh, so that's my favorite breakfast. And I do love pancakes, but um, oh. favorite lunch, I would have to say uh, lunch for me is a sandwich. I love sandwiches. Mm. I've always loved sandwiches. My favorite recipe, and it's not a very popular recipe, but is my favorite. So I don't know if you've seen, I do these uh, five minute fat-free microwave potato chips. Have you seen I've, those on the website? Yes, I've seen okay. those. I, I told my patient about those once and I have yet to make them, but I, you know what? It's Friday night. I think it's time. For you me. have to make them. It's crazy how crispy those things get. Okay. So we grew up in the South eating tomato sandwiches yeah. and... <laughs> Just I, grew up, I grew up in New Mexico. Yes, I get it. Okay. Tomatoes, mayonnaise, and we ate it on white bread. <laughs> and I thought, man, I oh. used to follow, I follow this guy named Sam, the cooking guy, and he had this potato chip tomato sandwich. And I thought, what a great idea. So I take those fat-free potato chips, big slices of a beefsteak tomato, and I have a cashew mayo that I make that's on the website. Awesome. That's probably my most popular recipe is the cashew mayo. I imagine. And I use, and I use Dave's Killer Bread, the green oh, one that doesn't yeah. have any oil in it. And I slather it with that cashew mayo, put two big old pieces of tomato on it, or slather it with the cashew mayo, mm. 
tomato and then put the potato chips on it and make a sandwich. So that's my favorite lunch. There you go. And uh, favorite dinner, I think would have to be, I would say my favorite dinner recipe would probably be the uh, jackfruit pulled pork sandwiches. Oh, does yeah. That mm -hmm. would that either that or um, the tacos, the cauliflower tacos. Mm. Yeah, I this the jackfruit. I I jackfruit pulled pork was one of the first things that I discovered. Well, we went to Uganda for a medical okay. mission trip for our church. I was the okay. only American physician. We brought a thousand pounds of medical supplies we did also it was so much work but when i went there i was like they grow jackfruit like crazy over there it's like apples mm -hmm. here right so i mm -hmm. brought barbecue sauce from america to there and on our last <laughs> night there i had some we were in the middle of rural africa there's no running water there's no electricity for two weeks and i was like okay guys we're cooking outside and i got everyone and i was like we need some big jackfruit we have 40 people we're gonna cook for and we <laughs> We pulled this jackfruit. It was so sticky, but we did it all. And we used that barbecue sauce. I've never seen the reaction. First of all, they're like, why are you boiling jackfruit? Uh -huh. And why are you slathering this stuff on it? They they thought we were crazy, but once they ate it, it was like <laughs> stars open. It's like, oh my goodness. Yes. What a fun thing. Oh my gosh. Yes, jackfruit pulled pork. It's good. It's like, yeah, it's like so delish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Have, yeah. What about desserts? Dessert. Um, golly. So I love chocolate. <laughs> I love chocolate. Now I want to tell people, people need to realize you can overeat on a plant-based diet. Like, yes, you can. A hundred percent. Yes. And when people go, Oh, but it's a healthy fat. That doesn't mean you eat nine avocados. <laughs> it's like, um, exactly. <laughs> but I love what Rip Esselstyn says. He said, there's a time and place for sweets and it's dessert and you don't make every day dessert, you know? Mm. And, and so, um, you know, lately my favorite sweet recipe has been the, uh, the fudge that I did back in December. Mm. And cause mm. I've always loved fudge, but it always has butter or oil yep. or something like that in it. Yeah. And so, um, fudge, we need to try that one. Coconut milk was the secret ingredient. And mm. so, and it's literally, I think, three re three ingredients basically just a little vanilla and oh, wow. coconut milk and the the non-dairy chocolate chip so i love that but i eat it very sparingly mm. um but i would say uh, when i need a good chocolate fix sometimes is the avocado chocolate pudding is really good oh, yes that's so delicious <laughs> the tofu, the both, but you know what i've been i, I love one of the things we've been making a lot lately is my uh, vegan apple crisp and the crumble. Oh, so yeah, yum! Have you had that? Have you had those yet? I haven't had that one yet. Oh my goodness! I'm going to be cooking up a storm. Well, I use um, Misfit Markets. Have you ever heard of them? I've heard of them. We've never used them though. So we started using them last week, and I got all these apples. I'm like, what? What am I going to make with all these apples? And I'm like, oh well, there you go. There you go. And it's a great breakfast recipe. It is oh. a great breakfast recipe. It, it's just, and it's super simple. It's the, there's, so there's a crumble recipe that I do and there's a crisp recipe that I do. And I think they're essentially the same. I elaborated on the crisp a little bit, but the, um, it's basically just apples with the, the, the filling is just basically apples with a little lemon juice and some cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice mm -hmm. and a little bit of maple syrup. So that's your filling. And then your crumble is, uh, I use uh, regular oats and some steel cut oats for a little crunch, but a few walnuts and some flaxseed and um, maple syrup kind of binds it together and then you just spread it and bake it. And it's just, it's a great dessert, but it's a great breakfast. So for some reason I went to bed the other night and I, I was like, man, I just, I had that on the brain. So I woke up super early two mornings ago and was in there <laughs> chopping apples, making because you can put the whole thing together in 45 minutes from beginning oh, to end. My I think. Gosh. So, so I did that and <laughs> I would not, and I, and I will say, I, I love coffee. I have always loved coffee. I love the smell mm. of it. I love, and um, I don't, I don't drink near what I used to. Like, I love that one cup in the morning mm -hmm. and, uh, but I would not have my first cup of coffee until I had that crisp come out of the oven. And that so, is so funny. <laughs> So I would say 
Yeah, I would say that uh, probably any of the chocolate recipes are good. Mm. Um, I do love pies. I have several pie recipes, but Oh, I take that back. My favorite dessert that's on there is that no bake is, is that no bake chocolate peanut butter pie that I make. That that is my favorite. No bake peanut butter pie. Chocolate peanut butter pie. Oh yeah. my goodness gracious. Okay, I see. We all see where I'm going to be this weekend. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, that's fat. You know, one of the things that um, it's funny how you crave something and you're like, what can I do to make this? in my healthier version. So you yep. ever had those chocolate s'mores, not s'mores, but the chocolate, uh, uh, shoot, turtles, the turtles with the oh, caramel and the- Oh yeah. So I take half of a date, half of a pecan, you know, just the pecan, uh, the one yes. pecan. And then I melt some non-dairy, the darkest chocolate I can get unsweetened. And then I sprinkle that on there and I put it in the freezer. Oh, oh. so good. So- so I will tell you, um, my wife does something similar. So good. And and she would <laughs> when she was wanting an energy kick in the day, she would take a date and put like a pecan or a walnut in it, and then yep. add a couple of chocolate chips to it. Yep. And then, yep. and so and by the way, if you like caramel, I oh. have a date. I have a date caramel recipe on the website. Goodness gracious! See, guys, this is why you got to go subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so excited when I see your emails like oh what am I going to make this week <laughs> so, so honestly that's this is brilliant I love it oh my gosh this was fantastic well <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your time and your in your your expertise with the recipes and making things less complicated than they need to be my goodness it's it's just so very important that we understand you can eat this way and it'd be fun and simple and delicious and, it, and it's not and i tell people eating healthy like really healthy is not complicated and it's not boring and it mm -mm. doesn't it doesn't have to suck it just it's no. not and it it just it doesn't and so I mean, just watching us get excited over the simple, <laughs> I oh, was yeah. like, I'm like, my mouth is drooling. It's time for me to go make dinner. Well, last night, you know, here's <laughs> what's funny. And I would tell people, so just for the sake of transparency. So <laughs> since COVID and I started blogging mm -hmm. over the past year, um, I gained like eight pounds <laughs> and I've not eaten bad things. Yes. Um, but a lot of the more hearty, savory dishes, like, yes, yeah, walnuts are great, but if you can constantly make those your main dish. So I was like, uh-uh. So I got on, I was, so I used, to, I was a big runner for a long time. And so, and I did CrossFit for a while. And so I was like, okay, I got to commit to one. And I was like, okay, goal, going to run a marathon. I'm assuming COVID's going to be gone in two years. I want to do like my goal. I just turned 48 in February. Mm. And so my goal at 50 is I want to do an Ironman. I want to do an Ironman. That's awesome. So, I just turned 50 last year. And so um, I'm training for my first 50K in October before I turn 51. But my husband did his first full Ironman at 49. So definitely do it. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I want to do it. So I you got my new it. running shoes the other day. And, and I'm like, so I started a running program a few days ago. And I was like, Perfect. okay, I feel a lot better. But but that being said, um, <laughs> I was thinking about dinner. We had some friends over for dinner last night and the uh, majority of our friends that come over for dinner aren't vegan or plant-based. And so, but they love to come over and eat. That's what I tell people. Like people aren't opposed to it. It's like at but first they're they going to come go? over. They should go vegan. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I'm with you. But uh, so last night we did, uh, we did the pulled, uh, we did the jackfruit pulled pork. Nice. Pulled pork. And, oh, it's, uh, it's a winner every time. Oh, they, they love it. And I, you know, I kind of take it a step further because I used to love, I love things charred when they're burnt. Mm. So when I cook it, I'll stick it in the oven and probably cook it twice as long. And then I'll turn the broiler on and let it really oh. get really crispy. But we had a I made more than I needed last night. And so I had a bunch left over. Yeah, so I was just sitting leftovers. here thinking, so here's what I'm going to do tonight for dinner. Oh, uh, right. I'm making, That's I'm, not fair. <laughs> I'm making some of my... Uh, I'm coming homemade, over. Uh, uh, come on over. <laughs> catch a flight. And I'm going to do... Um, so I'm going to do the uh, baked tortilla chips. Mm. And uh, 
I'm going to do the uh, cheese sauce and I'm going to do barbecue nachos tonight. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Yeah. That's just real nice. Thanks so much. I, <laughs> I hope you enjoy your yumminess. I, on the other hand, I'm going to have to go find one of these recipes and start chowing down. I got to use up some of these vegetables from the Misfit Market. I'm trying to what get them got? on the podcast. Oh my what goodness. Got? I, got, I got, I got pineapple, oranges, apples, bananas, blueberries, zucchini, yellow squash, arugula, parsley, okay. chard. Oh. <laughs> okay, here you go. Here's what you can do. You can take okay. the yellow squash. I've got a killer oh. summer squash saute or a squash casserole. Okay. Squash, squash casserole, casserole killer. Take okay. the zucchini. I have a killer zucchini bread recipe. <gasps> All right. Bananas. I've got a killer banana bread recipe. Oh, Lord. I'm going to get so many breads. It's good. Or, or you can take the bananas oh. and make my blueberry pancakes, which has banana in them. Okay. And, and oh my uh, the chard, the, let me tell you what I love to do with chard and my greens. Okay. Is I have uh, a hash brown casserole. That's a great breakfast oh. recipe. Okay. Make I have that. potatoes too. I got potatoes too. Do you got, there you go. Mashed potatoes or, but take the chard and chop it up real fine. Uh -huh. and put it into the hash brown casserole and bake it into the casserole. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got you covered. Yeah, I'm telling you, and that, mm -hmm, that is such a sudden, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I was born literally in New Mexico, just in the United States, like New, Demi, New Mexico is like as far south <laughs> as you can get in the state. Right. I trained in Texas. All my babies were born in Texas. I totally get okay. it. Yeah. I'm getting it. I mean, I could talk for hours about that. And taquitos. So you like spicy food? Oh, yeah. Oh, Do you yeah. like spicy food? Oh, yeah. Have you have you tried my chipotle chickpea tacos yet? Well, you're killing me, man. All right. Chipotle chicken. What? Chickpea tacos. The Jeez. chipotle chick chickpea. That, okay. That's next. Okay. That would be the easiest recipe you could make. It, and right. it's just corn tortillas, a little bit of the seasoning cook the chickpeas with a little bit of low sodium soy sauce and it all adheres and it just cooks and you oh make tacos out of it. Goodness. It is. And, and you know what, here's what I tell people. <laughs> I love, you can tell I get excited about this. <laughs> I know so, I'm getting excited talking to you. <laughs> I, I love sauces. Sauces oh, take food to the next level. Totally. So, so that is one of the ways, that is one of the areas I have really spent a lot of time trying to develop is flavorful sauces so like mm. salad dressings and and stuff like that mm -hmm. so so I have like two versions of sour cream so I've got a tofu and a cashew sour cream I've got the mayo oh, I've wow. got several salad dressings but mm -hmm. there is a killer uh chipotle aioli that I have on there too oh jeez, Louise I can't oh my boys are gonna <laughs> so my daughter's in Texas finishing medical school but my boys are here so I'm going to be feeding some men tonight. So I'm going to be making you go. all sorts of stuff. <laughs> the tacos, like the tacos all are right. so filling. Those are really good. All right. I'm going to have to jump on those tacos. I have so much food. I got to have these boys. I'm going to use the zucchini, the yellow squash. In the next 24 hours, it's going to be. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> With Shane and Simple pulled up on my computer. <laughs> going through. Oh my gosh. You have inspired me. And I hope you've inspired everyone else. Because they cannot oh. listen to this and not get excited about. Oh, what was that, <laughs> was that recipe? <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh, gosh. This is fantastic. Well, well thanks thank so much you. for having me on here. Oh. This was, I, it was an honor. I really mean that. It was, it was great. I'm always like when people go, hey, can I get you on the podcast? I'm like, what? Me? Like, <laughs> No, Are you it was, sure? <laughs> it was a blast. And I'm sure everybody listening is going to ha be highly inspired. So thank you for taking the time to develop these recipes to help people see how wonderful this way of eating is. Oh, yeah. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for what you're doing. I love the fact that we got, we got people on the medical front doing this. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go, though, please hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you will be notified whenever we upload any new videos. On Monday, we upload the Healthy Human Revolution podcast. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find it on all the major platforms, such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. 
On Tuesdays, we upload the Doctors In. This is where I answer your questions. Thinking of that, could you please comment below any questions you might have about health or wellness or any topics that you would like me to cover? Now, if you're looking for more resources on how to start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, anything regarding wellness, we've got you covered. Check out HealthyHumanRevolution.com. And again, thanks for watching.